Hello, this is going to be a review on self transport, passive and active transport. All right, so over here, uh, I just wanted to give you a reminder on what concentration gradient is. Okay, so when we have a concentration gradient, we have a high concentration on one side, so we can label that with an H, and a low concentration on the other side, and we uh, can label that with an L. So H and L. So here on a high concentration, you have all these little particles, they're bumping into each other, and so they're going to want to go this way, naturally. Okay, um, Just because there's more room over here, and things, uh, so they're bumping into each other, and they'll um, want to spread out. And eventually, they will uh, reach equilibrium, where if you look here, you have each and every little dot, or little particle, is um, almost equidistant uh, to where the other dots are. So it almost kind of looks like a grid, and that's, that's equilibrium. So if you have a high concentration, they'll eventually spread out to the rest of the area that you have there, and uh, it'll uh, be equilibrium or equally spread out. Okay, so here you have a concentration gradient. Here you do not have a concentration gradient. Okay, so let's discuss the differences between passive and active transport. And I want to use this analogy. So if you have a hill, okay, let's say you have a hill, okay, and on top of this hill, you have um, you have a boulder. So here you have a boulder, okay, and for active transport at the bottom of the hill you have a boulder, okay. Now uh, passive transport it does not require any energy. So um, that is if you have a cell. Let's say this is in a beaker and you have a cell on this side. Well, you have a cell where there's a very low concentration. Okay, so th there are no particles over there yet. However, if you have that same cell and you give time for diffusion to occur, eventually some of these particles will go through the membrane and into the cell. And that's what happens in real life. You're, you eat things, you drink things, and eventually every cell in your body needs um, things like oxygen and water. And so eventually, uh, your body doesn't have to do much because eventually through osmosis, and diffusion, um, your body will get those things. And so it doesn't require any energy. So if you have a guy, let's say you have a guy on top of this mountain here, and he just gives this boulder a little push, what's going to happen is it's going to roll down the hill. It's just going to roll. He doesn't need to push it anymore. It's going to go down the hill. Okay, so it goes, and the top of the hill is kind of like the high concentration, and the bottom is like the low concentration, okay? Things just naturally will go from the high to the low concentration, okay? So two points here is that it goes, goes from a high to low concentration. C, O, N, C period is concentration. And the second big point is no energy required. Okay, that's very important. Okay, so active transport, active. Think of someone um, who's uh, active in uh, fitness. They're going to work out a lot. They're going to use a lot of energy. So on the other hand, if we continue our analogy, we have a guy at the bottom of the hill here. Now, instead of going from a high to a low concentration, he is going to be pushing that boulder up, and he's going to be going from a low to a high concentration. And that's going to require energy. So here, if you had if you had a cell that needs all the molecules it can get, and let's say it's over here, but it needs even more molecules. It needs some of the other dots over here. It's it's going to take a lot of energy, a lot of work to get all those particles from an area of low concentration to high concentration because they want to do the opposite. It's going to be really hard for this guy right here to push that boulder up the hill. It's going to require energy. So first, there are two big points here. That it goes from a low concentration to a high concentration. And that it requires energy. Okay, so those are the big differences there. Okay, between passive and active transport. Okay, 
Now, the types of passive and active transport. So with packed, passive transport, I'm actually going to sit down for this part of it. For passive transport, we have simple diffusion, diffusion to osmosis, and three, facilitated diffusion. And for active transport, our, t our two examples here are endocytosis and exocytosis. Whoops. I can't write anymore. Cy whoops. Cytosis. Okay. So those are the two examples of active transport. So a good way to study would be to, uh, to go through examples of diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, endo and exocytosis. So endocytosis, things are entering the cell. Exocytosis, things are leaving the cell. And those are usually bigger molecules that the, uh, the cells either really need or need to get rid of, and it requires lots of energy. Okay, hope this helps. Thanks.